Uh, welcome back, Roasties. Today I am joined by the man, the myth, the legend. He has many names, but we affectionately know him as the GOAT. It's Jeremy Lattimore. How are you, lads? And I'm good, brother. Thanks for having me on. Um, I saw there I've gone to 2IC in the GOAT ranks, though. Big Mark Nichols getting a double last week, something I was unable to uh, achieve throughout my career. So I'll uh, keep, the, keep the bench for him again. Mate, yeah, we, um, I posted it up and everyone was in the comments saying... Um, this isn't Mark Nichols, and, and where's Mark Nichols? So I, you may have lost the tag, but I said there are many species of goats. Um, <laughs> you're one of the OGs, and uh, we're going to get on that uh, a little bit later on. But um, obviously everything's a bit crazy at the moment with COVID, and we like to check in with everyone. And just first off, it is, is a crazy time. So how are you travelling through COVID? Everything uh, fine with the family? Yeah, mate, we're going good. We, um, like, obviously young blokes at home, homeschooling, he's an eight-year-old, and... Um, Mrs. working from home, I'm working from home. My daughter's five, so she still goes to daycare, which um, if she was home, <laughs> it'd be a different story. She's a bit of a hurricane. and um, but Both my wife's and my work are still ticking on pretty good. And I started that uh, 75 hard, so I'm about 31 days into that. So double training days, no grog, no shit food. And um, like the more I'm going along, the more competitive I'm getting and the more I'm sort of pushing myself and getting after it. So... Um, might have a six pack by the end of seventy five days hard. Oh, that's the goal. You may have a better better rig than ever when you're in footy. So no, a hundred percent. And that's obviously, uh, mate. Throughout my footy career, I fucking hate like, hated doing weights and that. And now I really enjoy weights. So um, that I, I, I'd hope that my rig is better. And you're not running bloody ten k's a day out on the footy field. So I'm hoping the muscle mass comes through. I've seen a heap of people doing that seventy five. Challenge is it? Uh, does it get easier? Like you said, day thirty-one, so you're about halfway there. Is it easier the, the further you get along? Or yeah, hundred percent. The first two weeks were pretty hard, like get, getting into routine and um, my diet, like because I had what about four or five weeks in lockdown, so I was eating shit food and drinking like a few nights a week and just trying to break, break that habit and get into the um, good routine. But now, like we're in it, it's sweet. And my missus <laughs> doing it with me and. Lukey Lewis, he was the guy that got me into it because we do a fair bit of training together still. So he asked me to get on board and push me along. His rig's gone downhill since footy, hasn't it? Jeez. Mate, <laughs> honestly, he's, he's a freak. And he's so obsessed with his training and what he's putting into his body, mate. He's uh, unbelievable. But he, he's he's good for me. Like, he, he keeps me on the straight and narrow. Amazing he started as a winger too. Yeah, I know, yeah. mate. Now, now you look at him, he looks like he could fit in the front row. But he still, yeah. like, he still looks so athletic. There's so, so many people say like he, he could easily just walk back into a footy team and, and still cut it. But um, yeah, well, I think there was some stuff this year because he was training with Cronulla during the preseason. He was jumping in and um, I think he was running a few lines and giving a few of the um, first team a bit of windburn there. He was um, <laughs> carving up. So I know he come bouncing to the gym the next day, pretty happy with himself. Mad. Um, mate, with uh, just like footy, we, we like to take a few early sets, nothing too difficult, just a couple of little one-off questions. Um, just to get us started. So a little bit to get to know you. Uh, team you grew up supporting um, in the NRL. Hey, the uh, the Brisbane Broncos were my team back then. I grew up in Port Macquarie and um, one of my auntie's friends lives in Brisbane. So we used to go out and visit her and go to the games. And she, the Broncos used to send out, I don't know, it was a monthly mag, but um, I always used to get sent them. And uh, they were pretty successful too. So as a kid, that probably influenced my decision. Um, but yeah, I love the Broncos, and I remember getting photos with them when I was probably 11 or 12, and I was nearly as tall as Alfie Langer at the time. But I mean, never forget going to a like a game out there live and the effect that had on me. And um, yeah, that, that was it was pretty special back then when the Broncos were so dominant. And uh, obviously, then I went to play for every other club in the NRL and forgot about <laughs> the <them>. Broncos. <laughs> Bar them. <laughs> But I, I, I legit always like it was my favourite place to play out there at Suncorp, like, and I had a pretty good record too. Mate, if they they're looking for a few players next year, you might be able to come back and make a run. Mate, no chance. <laughs> I wouldn't say I was uh, the most agile in my uh, footy career, and a few years after retirement, it's ten times worse. Mate, you said you were nearly as tall as uh, Alfie Langer. Who was your favourite player? Was it was it him? I loved Alfie and Lockie are, but obviously being a big, big tall bloke and a front rower, I love Petro and Webke. They were uh, they, like the, the, what the team was built off back then and then two boys were um, le- leading from the front. And I remember the first time I played a first grade trial, maybe. It was against Petro and fuck, he hit me high, bro, and knocked like, like full weight like, just with that big bandage on his arm. And I was seeing stars, but I was like, fuck, how good that? I got hit by Petro. <laughs> 
<laughs> something to something to write in the uh, in the memoirs. Yeah, I reckon he, did he have a, like a metal plate under that pad or what? Like, oh, hundred percent, man. That's what I was. Uh, <laughs> I remember I was like, fuck, you know, when you get stung yeah. in a game of footy, I was like, yeah, well, this is what first grade must be like. Welcome to first grade, mate. Um, when you go to the footy, what's uh, where's your favourite place to sit? Now, well, now I work with the Dragons corporate team, so mate, you're, you're a corporate box man now, eh? Cor- mate, oh yeah, I'm full corporate. Looking after the partners, you know, I'm a man of people, so I get in, <laughs> get in the boxes, and often I'll uh, go there with with uh, all the attention to behave, and then by the uh, final whistle, I've had a fair few under me belt and really enjoy myself. The uh, the pies and sausage rolls at half time are unbelievable as well. So that was the last one. What's your favourite food? And uh, yeah, pies and sausage rolls are the most common answer, but that that have to be yeah. Yeah, at the footy, yeah, for sure. Nice old pine sauce. But up there, you'd get those little mini pies, wouldn't you? Like little gourmet yeah. pies. And just very Moorish. And, yeah. um, but, mate, that's what, lucky I'm not going to the footy on this 75 hard. I'd be, um, that'd be a test of the mental strength. Be hard to go back to work and stuff on, on Monday. Yeah. Oh, no Monday lag, go. No. Mate, um, let's, go, let's go back to your start of, uh, of your life and, and career. Like uh, growing up in, in Port Macquarie, was, was footy your main focus as a kid? Mate, when I was a um, younger bloke, I played soccer. Then I, all my mates from school were playing footy, so I went across and played footy from about under nines to, uh, what was I, 14. And then I actually had a year off when I was 15 to go in bodyboarding comps. I was a mad little uh, esky rider up there and um, up to no good as a young bloke. So I had a year off footy when I was 15, and then I ended up coming back in 16 and yeah, sort of got a bit more serious with me footy at that point. You know, them teenage years, what you're like and what you're doing and getting up to. So, especially on the on the coast, you'd you know you'd rather be uh, rather be on the beach than than slogging out in the footy field any day. A hundred percent. I remember the because 14s we lost to Waro, 15s the boys they freaking won the comp when uh, I didn't play and then we lost in 16s oh. again. But I remember like me me good mates we went to the beach the day after they played the grand final they're like oh we beat Waro and I'm like oh, fuck, I must have been the common denominator <laughs> then we lost the year after as well so uh, I think I was before uh, before you had that year off were you you know making rep sides and stuff like that or was it just you know just nah, playing for a bit of fun uh, only like I, pl- I played North Coast um, pretty well m- most years never went any higher than that and then. Yeah, that's why I was just like, whatever, I have a year of footy. And then 16, I'll come back and that's when you sort of get to that age where you start throwing a bit of team around. And, um, man, I think I was coming off the bench in my first year in under-18s. And then my second year 18s, I just come out, I went hard at training, I was humming and then end up popping my shoulder in my... Um, I played a, a grade, uh, under-18s, got a 100-metre try, scored like three tries. Then um, they're like, do you want to play first grade? That was my like, debut. I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah, I want to play. My dad's like, oh, don't you got all the rep footy coming up? I'm like, no, nah, I'll be sweet. Pop my shoulder. <laughs> Didn't play another game for the Port Sharks. <laughs> had to get a shoulder, Rico. Oh. And um, at that point, I hadn't signed with an NRL club. And um, Cronulla were like sniffing around. They'd brought me down to a few camps and were really keen on me. And I was like, oh, I just want to play like the uh, Australian schoolboy. We'll play like New South Wales CHS and see if I can match schoolboys and just, you know, play the year out and um, pop my shoulder. I was like, oh, fuck, I'm going here. And then, thankfully, they um, were still keen to bring me on. and um, Put pen to paper straight away. Oh, mate, couldn't sign quick enough. And obviously, yeah, begun my journey around Australia and New Zealand in the NRL. Um, Port, like, like I was telling you before we started, I, I spent a bit of time in Port. And Port, coming from a country town, Port's like a huge, just a larger country town. Um, you walk down the street and say good day to every second person. Moving from from Port to Cronulla, though, like even though it's still beachy, it's a, you know a big city. As an eighteen year old, was it was it hard adjusting from that you know semi sort of country life? Yeah, look, it, uh, so I did my HSC on the Friday, and my old man drove me drove me to Sydney the next day on the on the Saturday, and I, I moved into a house with um, there was about five of us: Dane Weston, uh, Dane Nielsen, um, Benny Holden. So he didn't play any grade, but there was about four or five of us, and it was a bit of a mad crew. So that sort of helped. Like a few of the boys, they were all sort of country fellas too, weren't they? They were, yeah. Dane came from Goulburn. Um, Dane Nielsen come from North Queensland, and um, Benny Holden was from Foster, from near where I was from. So um, we, we were all, you know, mad country boys, and um, we went through ha- three house parents in the first year. So they'd had the same house mother for about five years it was Johnny Green's mum who played in the NRL and she moved away and they 
ended up giving us one lady. She walked out on it and stuff for about a month, like the boys was partying and carrying on. And then we got another one. And uh, anyway, by the third one, they ended up just throwing us out of the shark house. And that's where I ended up moving in with Tony Kane and his family. But um, look, it was an adjustment. Um, but, you know, it was, it was it was pretty cool, like li- living with five blokes and, you know, living around Cronulla, there's always something going on, especially as a young bloke. And, um, yeah, first night, first night, I was still 17 and snuck into Carmen's nightclub in uh, Miranda, I think. That was the first night I saw Sunnyville out. And I just moved down from the country the first like, day before. I was like, fuck, this is unbelievable. Like, this big like, legend. I think he just won the comp then. Was that 04? Yeah, he would have won the comp. And um, he was like an idol, so that was pretty cool. That would have been mental. Um, yeah, you know, young young kid, you know, heading out and and seeing the, this you know mammoth footy player that you've probably grown up, you know, watching over the last few years, and and then seeing him out like would have been a bit of a surreal feeling. Yeah, it was, mate. And uh, there was always plenty going on at Carmen's back in the day. Yeah, <laughs> mate. Yeah, yeah, like you said, yeah, head uh, went to the NRL club at 17, 18, and and you, you probably feel like you're going to debut the very first week you play, but you spent sort of five years, five six years in the in the undergrade, low grades, and before you made your debut at uh, a par in 09. Was it a little bit disheartening or, you know, that you didn't debut early or did you sort of make you a bit mentally stronger? Oh, mate, yeah. R- R- rugby league, like, just really tests the, uh, the mental resolve and the really resilience. And um, that first year I moved to Sydney, I ended up playing for junior roos. So it was a massive st- Stephen Bradbury. Like, I think there was about 10 forwards pulled out and I ended up getting the call up and thought, fuck, I must be going better than I thought I was. And then um, year after, popped my shoulder and um, Cronulla, I think they offered me two grand to stay. And then thankfully, like, uh, Parramatta come in and offered me a deal and went out there, Rico and that like, second Rico. And I remember I come back, I was running same arm, same leg and turned up to um, Parramatta and Finchie was into me, like, um, Mr. Larson. Like, I couldn't run properly. I was a bit unco, but I stood at the best of times. And um, that first year was a real write-off. Ended up luckily winning the premiership with the reserve grade. But, um, you know, it was a shitty ass year. And then that next year, like that, that was when I, I thought like, well, maybe I do have what it sort of makes that takes to make the grade and end up playing every game. We won the reserve grade comp again. That was like me, Jimmy Maloney, Johnny, Johnny Wright and a few other blokes who played in our Joey Nullivy I played. And then, yeah, then that year after. So that was, I was 22 turning 23. So yeah, what wasn't, yeah, moved to Sydney, play first grade straight away. And obviously I, I was a front rower who wasn't, um, yeah, renowned for being a tall, muscly bloke, and I ha- had to work hard at the best times. And the Rico sort of put me back a little bit, the shoulder reconstructions. But um, yeah, de- definitely there was, there was a lot of self doubt through that five year period whether I would have what it took t- took to make the grade. And I obviously, wasn't a match winner or someone who could change a game. So it was just through me hard work and you know applying myself and getting the body right. And um, you know, eventually cracked the grade and hung around for a few years. Mate, coming from the, you're talking about coming from the bench in in 18s and you, know, you come from the bench and playing reserve grade and you know you 163 games I think it was from the bench I think it's a record in the NRL for for a player coming coming from the bench. Were the times you'd look on the team sheet hoping for that eight and ten jersey or was it just like give me whatever reserve grade number you want and and uh, and I'll play. Yeah, mate, I don't, I don't think, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a powerhouse. So I wasn't suited to starting the game. I, I did like, love that role coming off the bench and, you know, playing for 20 minutes before half time and 20 minutes after. And then, you know, the years I was really humming, I was coming back on for the last 10 minutes. But yeah, there, there was a few games I did start and I did love it. But, you know, it just w- wasn't probably suited to me with my, my body type. And, um, you know, I just really tried to make that role. I remember Ivan Cleary because, you know, it, took, it was four or five years I was in and out of grade from sort of 09 to 2014 and that's when I really took the bull by the horns and cemented the spot in the NRL and Ivan was like you've really got to own that role across half time and you know make sure you're the best guy to coming off the bench in the NRL and through that period you know I ended up playing I was playing more minutes than the starters like most weeks and um yeah it, it was sort of good that the sting was out of the game and you know with that tall body frame I had I could get, get smacked through the middle at the start and big tall lumber and thing I'd run out of puff pretty quick so I did did love coming off the bench pretty much like everyone every time I've spoken about you to any, any player or you know ex-player coach or anything like that they always say you're one of the best locker room guys and you said you adjusted to that role of you know I'm coming off the bench I'm not going to be a starter every week and seems like you sort of owned that and, and you, you knew what your role was and 
and that you loved, you know, being that locker room guy. Is that something you you, you loved? Oh, bloody hell, mate! Yeah, that, that's what I, uh, I I love. And you know, for footy can be mentally fatiguing across you know twenty six games and uh, the ups and downs of winning, losing, boys getting dropped, people getting injured, and um, you know I'd always try and bounce into the sheds on Monday, regardless of a win or loss, and try and bring that uh, camaraderie. And you know, when it was a team drink, I was trying to lead from the front there, and. Um, you know, I used to enjoy myself and I've got plenty of videos in my phone that I look back on for a laugh of, um, you know, a couple of drinks that we've had across the years. And, um, that, that, you know, obviously I was lucky enough to play 180 odd games in the NRL, but I've built friendships that will last a lifetime through playing footy and, um, some memories that will get me through as well. So, um, yeah, that, that definitely was something I did love being the, uh, the guy in the locker room trying to get, get the boys going or having a laugh or gene someone up. You mentioned you um, played with uh, Jimmy Maloney in, in Para in, in the early days. You played with him in uh, at Penrith, uh, not, not Penrith, sorry, um, uh, the Warriors and yep. the Sharkies as well in, in 2017. Yeah. He's, uh, you, you both, he's, he's renowned as, a, as one of those locker room guys and great character. Battle between you and him, who, who's, the, uh, who's the better locker room guy? Well, mate, funny you say that. So we, we, when we both signed at Parramatta, they moved us in together. And uh, I was, fuck, I was OCD as a young guy doing things. And he has not changed one iota from before first grade to now. He's rat's ass and wouldn't go to bed early. And I'd try to go to bed at a decent time and be out there throwing a fucking ball at the wall and pissing me off. And he's just a grub. But, um, mate, like, when I went to the Sharks in 2017, I remember Flano was like, mate, I fucking need you to keep your mate in check and, you know, control him for me. can be a pain in my ass. Um, anyway, they've sat us together on the plane to go across to um, England for the World Club Challenge. And um, Flano's like, well, don't want none of you to drink. Like, there's 20 of us going across. And uh, he's like, don't want any of to drink. And anyway, mate, Jimmy's fucking blind <laughs> by the time we get off the plane. And uh, I remember we're walking off the plane. I'll sit next to him. He's fucking torturing the whole way. And I, I just got there. So I didn't want to like, piss Flano off. So I didn't drink and try to be on my best behaviour. And he's pissing me off the whole way. See Shane Warne walk out of the um out of first class. He's like, whoa! He like runs after him, fucking lads, lads, come here, take a photo, make me take a photo with him. He got red wine like up the side of his mouth. <laughs> anyway, we get back to the hotel. I'm like, fuck, mate, you're pissing me off, eh? You're getting in me face. You go, I'm going, I'm fucking chin here in a minute, and he goes, chin me anyway. Put one on his chin, and um, then we anyway we go back out for a drink that Arvo. Like that was when we first got to England, and we're in London. And, uh, mate, that Arvo, I fucking owned him all afternoon. Like, I was just all over him. And way that goes, I've never seen Jimmy go quiet. And I think it was just the history we've had together. And, obviously, we lived together for two years. And over in um, New Zealand, you know, we're, we're thick as thieves and in each other's pocket. But he's one of my best mates. And, you know, I, I love him, but he, he can be a uh, pain in the ass. So I got a lot of respect for his wife, Jess. I don't know how she puts up with him. He's he's one of the, probably the greatest character, one of the greatest characters in the, in the NRL, and um, like we said, you spent you know a fair bit of time with him playing um, backyards for stuff. And um, how special was it when you got to share that grand final um, day or weekend, uh, the retirement special, um, two thousand nineteen. Yeah, mate, it was fucking great. As you, as you know, I ran into you that weekend and, mate, I don't think me and Jimmy, that was a Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night. I think, did I say Saturday morning or Friday? It must have been Saturday. Yeah, it would have been Saturday, yeah. Yeah, mate. Friday. Like, we, fuck, flat out, I reckon we had about 16 hours sleep in about four days and um, me and him didn't leave, leave each other's side and at the races on the Saturday, fuck, he had a massive lash at colding and cleaned up so Saturday night we're out in um double bay till about five and then we had to go to the fucking grand final and uh mate we're in the horrors on getting around, around waving in the uh crowd and it was, mate, it was good because obviously we weren't playing in the same team at that point and uh, he was heading across to England or well, France sorry and I haven't seen him since so uh mate when we're due to catch up again it should be a good one We'll get you. We'll get you on another podcast, and we'll have a chat between you all, and share some oh, of these mate. stories. That, share some of these stories that you probably some of you can't speak about while you're playing and, and stuff, and, and get them all. Mate, a hundred percent. I was thinking that one day because obviously 
I was thinking when he comes back, I'd love to get on a podcast with him because fuck, I've got some good shit on it. He does on me as well, but um, depending if he goes into coaching, yeah, it might have to stay in the um, stay in the locker room for a while, just for a little bit. But let's record it. We'll need to record it. Have it have it on uh, on the ready as soon as he he quits. It's it's done. Uh, I know he was he was actually speaking of um, coming out and playing local footy before he when when he um, before he went over to Super League. And um, he was talking about coming back to country because he he used to play at Norwich, so close close to us. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, it was like, oh, you know, if he could come out and play in the Group Eleven or Group Ten, that'd be massive for us. And uh, uh, he probably will, eh? Like, because he's just announced his retirement, so he's playing over in um, France for a year in the local con. And because um, I don't know, over there they fucking pay seventy five percent of your wage in um, France, like the Chamage or something. So, mate, you might master that for a couple of years and. Uh, no, but he'll come back here and land on his feet, whatever he does. Oh, Jimmy always done that. But, um, mate, he he would do that because I know his dad captain coached out. Did he captain coach out there, I think? So, yeah, Orange yeah. Sims, I think it was, yeah. Yeah, so I, I know that's like owns a special place in his heart with his old man. So you could find him out there, mate, or whether the older Rimba might, Magpies might be trying to um, get him back out there. I well, know um, you, uh, when you finished, you went back and played a bit of local footy, who'd, who'd you play for and, and how was that sort of experience giving back to, to the local game? Yeah, so yeah, one of my best mates is Jimmy Green, a bloke I played a lot of lower grades with at Parramatta. He um, was playing down the Wollongong Comp for West, so obviously planned to play the full year down there last year and shit hit the fan with COVID and he was just like, their, their A grade team went and played in that Sydney Shield and Jimmy was just coaching like his team down there and the, it's like an A-grade, reserve grade. So I just went and played a couple of games down there after not like doing anything for about three months. So it was horrible. I couldn't walk for about a week. But um, this year I got a bit more serious and we played down in Mittagong, which was, you know, it was really good. That was um, a bit of an experience down there. They, they freaking love their footy. And there was me, Bryson Goodwin and um, Mitchie Allgood. And also um, Jimmy was there with me. But um, yeah, we're going really well. Strong comp. Like, there's a fair few ex old boys playing out in that comp and, um, you know, there's a couple of, couple of tough fellas trying to smack you every week. Yeah, I was going to say, like, when um, out in sort of country footy out here, it's if an NRL player comes out, it's like everyone talks about, like, let's go out and try and whack him. And so it's like you, everyone thinks, oh, they can just come back and carve up, but it's like you've got a you got a target on, on the front of you. Mate, 100%. Yeah. There's no carving up, mate. And even, I remember Bri, Bri was getting hit late and... Um, Mate, I was getting smacked. It was good though. Like it's good fun, and they're all like you shake hands at the end of the game, and they're all, they're all good fellas who just fucking love testing themselves, and obviously know that we've had a few runs on the board, and they um you know they want to put one on you, so they tell the boys at the pub after, and a couple of blokes didn't miss. Yeah. <laughs> and, That's what and, you and, saw on Monday. Hundred percent. Oh, I was a bit better because I trained for it this year, so the body was a bit better. But um, my plan is to play a couple of games next year for the Port Sharks, where I grew up playing. And as I mentioned earlier, I played the uh, one and only game and popped my shoulder there. So go back and play a couple of games there, and because I obviously know what what it would mean because I grew up and I remember when the boys would come up and the Cronulla Sharks just come up and play back there in the day. And as a kid growing up, that was the best thing ever for me. So to be able to go, go back and, and do that would be awesome. They'll put a statue up for you. <laughs> I might, have to, I, might, I might have to fund it. But, yeah. um, so we'll there we go. Yeah, I mean, Mate, um, five clubs, two stints at the Dragons. You've had more starts than, than Farlap. Is, yep. there, uh, is there one club that you hold more dear than the others? Mate, de- definitely the Panthers and Dragons. I played a majority of my games at the um, the Panthers and that's where I really established myself as a, a first grader. I'd sort of in and out of first grade there for my first 50 games. And um, once I hit 50 games at Penrith, that was when I sort of become you know, a, a regular first grade. And I, I don't think I'm going to miss two games through suspension through about 120 games. And, um, you know, we had, we had a good, good squad out there where we made the prelim and, um, lost in 2014 and 2016. I think we made the second week of the finals. And, you know, I, I was there when a lot of these young blokes now who are playing at Penrith, um, were coming through the grades. So I, I played Nathan Cleary's first game and fish and, Yowie and um, you know it's sort of cool to see them boys doing what they're doing now. Um, but then you know coming to the Dragons, to finish my career, the last two years were probably more probably the most fun I had over my um, footy career, both on and off the field. And um, you know we had a bit bit of success there in 2018, and a few things went our way. We might have went a bit better, but we lost a few key players to injury, and you know we went through that lull where we lost a lot of games in the middle part of the season. And um, 
you know, oh, it's hard to split them too. And I'm still involved with the Dragons, doing some work now. And, you know, growing up as a kid in Port Macquarie, you know, I wouldn't think I would be lucky enough to go and play first grade for, you know, 11, 12 years. And now still being able to be involved in a football club, just a old battler from Port Macquarie. <laughs> it's an old battler on, on some sore legs and just getting, getting through his career. 100%. Well, I know you just spoke about then, like you were there for Cleary's first game and um, and Fish and that. And I know when when you're at the Dragons, obviously you know following you along, I'm a Dragons fan, and with the Goat staff and, and all that, we um, follow along pretty closely. You and Zachy Lomax were pretty close. Um, I know you like went overseas with him and stuff. It might have been just a footy trip, but you just seemed to get along real, um, very well. And he's a young bloke coming through, and you would have been there for. His first match as well? Yeah, yeah. No, I was there when Lowe played. He, mate, he's a good kid. He's a good country kid and um, someone who, you know, has really started to establish himself in the last two years in, in the way he um, plays footy. There's a lot of uh, hype there early on and um, a lot of pressure for them young guys when that does happen. But I think he's proven in the last few years he, he's a genuine, you know, star and um, he's someone, I think, in the next few years. If uh, Dragons are going to keep getting better with all them young guys he'll play a big part in that and you know there's an exciting crop of youngsters down there at the moment and I'm really looking forward to the next few years to watch how they um come along as well as you know Zach potentially going on to play Origin yeah they um even with the loss on the weekend they showed they all those young guys stood up and and played well against them so it'd be exciting to see how they go over the next few years yeah, they've got, they've got a real connection to cut them young blokes. Because I missed do, a few yeah. of the tries at the start of the game, but it just popped up yesterday on the Dragons' Instagram. And they just they know where each other are all the time. Eh? And that, that, that's a big part of why Nathan Cleary and Jerome were why so well, I play so well is because they played so much footy together. And, you know, that that's that synergy is hard to build with someone you haven't played with before. But with um, young Bud and Sloan and Amon playing so much footy together, that um in the, in, in the key positions too, yeah. that, that's exciting. I, I saw... Um... Uh, Jaden Sullivan speak after the game and he was I just want to play footy oh you can put me in the front row if you want I'll, I'll play anywhere and it's like that's the attitude you want like he's not a big guy but you know he showed you know jumping into hooker he can he can take on those tough positions and, and he looks great he's, he looked awesome don't you? the team looked so good when he was on the field he uh, he just got that little bit of spark and um, you, you never know what he's going to do and the way the game sort of transformed over the last you know 12 months with all these rule changes I think He's suited to that position as, as long as you can protect him a bit with the um, defence because um, you don't need the big fella getting spotted all day. But, you know, with um, Benny Hunt fit and Amon in the 5A, I'd be looking to play him there next year in, you know, him and um, McCulloch sharing that role. That would be exciting. Um, you got to represent Australia in the, in the PMs match in 2015. Tell us a little bit about that experience. Yeah, mate, that's a highlight of my career. Obviously, I didn't play uh, any rep footy and, you know, always fuck, well, thought I'd be a chance a few years there in 2014 and 15 for country, being a proud country boy, but I never got the call up. But, um, you know, to play at the end of 2015 after a year where I, I had a pretty good year on the field for uh, like coming off the bench and getting caught up to go play over there with guys who um, were, you know, few of my origin stars at the time and now are all the boys playing origin. So it's a pretty cool experience and Papua New Guinea is the only place in uh, the world where rugby league is the number one sport. So it was it was a pretty wild experience over there and, um, you know, they, they, they're they just the perfect height to hit me. I was getting folded and <laughs> popping my hand grenades out the back, <laughs> hoping they'd find someone. That's licking their lips and just rubbing their hands when they saw you running. Mate, 100%. Because I remember, I think I g Yui Aiken up one day because Yui was in the team with me. I got a clip of him getting snacked and then he somehow got the clip of this bloke folded me like he was putting his washing away. I was like, yeah, what a, one or one or got me. It was a uh, fair shot. And they are mad. They love their footy over there. Yeah, mate. And they sort of warn you. They're like, don't give your gear away. They'll, they'll, like, they'll legitimately kill each other to get the gear. And um, But, you know... Yeah, like it's sort of a taste of what, what the soccer players over in Europe and South America and everywhere would experience with, um, you know, they love rugby league here, but not not like over there. It's a pretty cool experience. Mate, you finished up in uh, 2009. You're only like 32. I say only 32, but, um, you know, you see players playing well into their late 30s now. Was there an option to go anywhere like overseas or, anything, or another club or was it just, you know, I'm done, I'll go play local footy? Yeah, there was plenty of options over in England and um, I obviously changed clubs a fair bit. So I, I wasn't changing clubs and the, the, the job with the drags and it actually popped up that I'm doing now in the sponsorship 
luck roll and doing the ambassador stuff. So if I had played another year, I might've lost that. Um, Dragons still were not sure what was doing. And I was like, you know what, I'll just call it now. Like I've got that job there and I was happy with what I've achieved. And, um, you know, with them rule changes last year, I probably wouldn't have been suited to them anyway. So it was probably a good decision in the end because, um, you know, around that middle of the rock there, it looks fucking torture at the moment. Like you'd be playing stuck in the mud, especially when you got your Tedesco's and that sniffing around the rock. It's, um, it was hard enough. And, um, yeah, I think I made a, the right call. But um, if I had went to England, I would have been over there through COVID as well. So I don't know if my wife would have been that happy with that. Yeah, and the kids. And oh, I've got a few mates, obviously, over there. So I know it was a battle early. But in saying that, there now, I saw Jolie Thompson's at a Liverpool game on the weekend with a full house. So it, uh, and we're, we're, we're play, playing footy in one state. Yeah, true. Yeah. Like last year, what they were, there was times when they weren't playing footy or soccer at all and, and we were playing sport, but then we didn't have a crowd and now they're back playing full sport. With and that's crowds yeah. And, yeah, so. 100%. And like, like, like I mentioned about Jimmy Maloney before, you would feel the boys, like, cause we've got a good, like a group of mates who were all good, good mates from the Paratons and feel the boys whinging about lockdown that and Jimmy's like shut the fuck up he goes I was in lockdown all last year he goes I don't want to hear about you whinging and then he's sending like videos and that out in clubs over there and uh yeah I was like yeah fair point like obviously he had to put up with it last year and we're pretty lucky but then obviously it's our turn this year I would good. actually like I would actually like to see him come back and play in the NRL just one more year just so he can sledge everyone in French yeah, oh mate, I oh, know. He, he, think, he, he thinks he's sexy anyway, so I can only imagine now when he comes back and he's speaking a bit of French to our um, wives, he'll be thinking he's a man. He, uh, oh, but that big husky voice, I don't know about that. That's, it'll be funny to see. Mate, uh, now we've uh, on to one, talking about one of the greatest moments of your career, which was um, when you punched Cameron Smith in the dick. Um, almost every fan question when I asked about this revolved around it, so. Uh, Go spill the beans first. Did you mean to sack whack him? Mate, he, he, he was encroaching on my um, area and I was just trying to play the ball and I, I did reach out, but I didn't think I got him as well as I did. And um, obviously it was a try assist to Cam McGuinness, but um, <laughs> I didn't think I got him that well, but um, he might have had a big set of cags on him. That was a, that was another question. Well, how big was it? But um, obviously, you got him pretty well because he, he went down. Yeah, I know. And no, he was genuinely like he was genuinely sore, and it was more like just an action. Like fuck, I've got to play the ball, throw the arm up, and um, <laughs> he went down. Do you think um, like from from that we sort of we branded the goat, and it was the fans that got behind it, and uh, which sort of helped bring it to life, but. Um, just just to clear it up, it's not because we we hate Cameron Smith. It was more like the wacky you've taken away his his goatness, and uh, so. But like, how did how did you feel like um, you know when all this sort of stuff was was coming out? Because it's interesting to hear like we we post about it and don't get a lot of um, player feedback, but you were really engaging with it, which sort of helped and, and sort of kept it along. Hey, that's it. Like as I've said, I like with locker room guy and have a fair bit of fun. So it was all a laugh, and um, yeah, mate. There's obviously no malice in anything, and um, it's all for a laugh. And mate, I even had a, a guy, an accountant, the other day who like I'm mortgage broker now, and he goes, mate, I just want to. He goes, I was there on the hill that day when you um it came in the nuts, and um, he goes, that was that was an awesome day, and I was like, oh no worries. Mate. <laughs> Um, it was quite funny hearing that. And he was a 60, 64 year old dude. Um, but obviously, Cam Smith, he's like a freak and probably the best ever player of the game. And obviously, yeah, everyone, maybe it's a bit of the tall poppy in, in Australia, you know, seeing the, the, the real goat get taken down in Cam. But um, it was only one little incident there. But um, yeah, he's obviously a freak. And I, I think most people do know you are just joking when yeah. you do take the mickey. I think I think he's recovered pretty well with um, a few more premierships after that moment, so <laughs> it helps. Um, but yeah, you're right. Like it's like that tall tall poppy syndrome. People want to, you know, he was so good for so long, and, and people just wanted to bring him down. It was, yeah, it was a piss take. But um, there probably was a little bit of negativity from fans. Did you experience like anyone um, sort of, you know, in the comments saying, you know, oh, you're not the goat he is or anything like that? Did they take it too seriously or? Oh, I don't know. There's always someone saying something, but mate, oh, I, I realised I wasn't the goat because of my playing ability. <laughs> it, it was all a piss take and uh, having a laugh. And um, yeah, no, no, most people were generally all right, mate. They were just having a laugh. Mate, um, we, like, we had players like um, 
tag us in videos like I was saying with uh, Zach Lomax. He's he's Latsy in the off season and and that's oh, a help, barley. Help, the barley. Yeah, the barley incident. I don't know when you stepped in a stepped in a pool or something, cut your leg and yeah, um, oh, but you know, stuff it. like that, that that helps. Like when the players get behind it and they, they understand like, you know, it's a piss take, it's a, it's fun and games and, and all well, that. And that's a, there's platforms like yourself and Kempi and um the boys at YKTR Sports. You use a you know, you use you're about having a laugh, but you're also getting all the good shit out there, which the mainstream media doesn't do and obviously there's many things lately with the Corey thing and few other things where they just go too far with the bullshit in the media so you should be allowed to have a laugh with the boys and take the mickey and even you know the, the mark nichols goat thing like i'm sure he'd love it to laugh he scored two tries i mean well, front I'm, rollers do that yeah I'm, I'm pretty sure like he's actually already got the nickname like that's not you know us all, we're just jumping on it but i'm pretty sure he's called the goat in the locker room so yeah right okay there you yeah. go so you know, i didn't get that see i could have created that one for myself early on but i didn't mate, you could have trademarked it could have been selling some selling some good gear. Get some gear out there, mate. Uh, so since retirement, like died down a bit, or are you uh, inundated with people on the street stopping you saying goat and things like mate, that? I still, I, yeah, I still, still get a fair few like around, especially down the Gong and uh, around the Shire if I'm out in the Syrup or whatever. But um, yeah, it's, it, it's probably a bit, a bit hard now with everyone in lockdown. It's not like you're yeah. walking, walking around the house going, "Hey, goat this, hey, goat that." Yeah, no, none of that at home. Just only getting chopped down here, but. Um, no, mate, it was obviously, yeah, there, there was a bit of a um, tension around it at the time and obviously, yeah, I, I was pretty um, cruisy my whole career, but, you know, I got right behind that and the, the Dragons fans used to have a Jerry, Jerry, Jerry chant, which I used to run out there and clap, get get them going before the game for a laugh. But, um, yeah, it's all good, mate. I, I obviously love the fans and they get get keep the game going and they are the game really without the fans it's we saw that last year when there's no crowds it's shit ass. I um was going through some old photos um just trying to find some for some promo and your, uh, yours came up with um in the crowd it might have been after your final game drinking a, a goat beer so it yeah. was like you know was someone's, warm someone's, as I remember yeah, it. I was gonna, like they would have had to snuck it in and leave it there for at least you know two hours before they gave it to you come but, straight um, out of the microwave I can tell you it was fucking horrible <laughs> Um, on your nicknames, though, like you, you got a few lats, goat. Um, one one was sent in saying goose. Um, any others? And then how did you get them? Yeah, the, the goose was growing up in Port Macquarie. I um, was pretty well just a goose, what I am still now. But um, I used to get Ronnie Perlman, like Clay Morrow, or Sons of Anarchy. And um, what's me and my um, wife were watching a show this cryptocurrency one startup and he's in that and I just giggle every time I see him because he's got a big long face like me and he got close I was too. Um, but no, I did pretty well. I've become more Latsy and um, Jerry in Sydney. Yep. Well, oh, um, we had uh, someone keeps on sending in Matt Burton. Young, yeah, uh, well, young mate, young he, Matt Burton. He, I can see it. Hundred percent. He's um bit bit old to be any offspring, but um yeah. I, I see a little bit in the face there. He's probably yeah. a bit better looking than me though. I, I, I wouldn't put him in my um wouldn't put him down with me. Mate, we've got um, some fan questions just to, to finish this off. Just some nice easy ones. Um, I think we've sort of covered your your, your best moment of your career was that uh, the PM game. Um, pro- pro- any finals game as well. Like I remember being a kid growing up in Port Macquarie. They're simply the best um, theme song and. You know, whenever it gets to finals time, it's just that. It, like now, like the sun's shining and um, there's a different feel in the air. And, you know, I think I played five or six finals games across my career and some of them were pretty special results. So, unfortunately, never got to play an NRL grand final. But, um, yeah, the finals games and first game, that that was obviously a, a, a long way to get there. And, you know, it was my fifth year in Sydney. So, lucky enough to have all my friends and family and, you know, my now wife there. So, it, it was pretty cool, but um, yeah, the, the PMs game was felt like it was just a reward for you know working hard my, my whole career, and um, you know it's not a real Australian jersey, but it's something I look back on pretty fondly. Uh, best player you played with? Um, well, G- Jimmy Maloney's like obviously I'm biased. He's one of my best mates, but he's just the ultimate competitor. Um, you know, I played with. But not the most skilled, but Michael Luck and Simon Mentoring, they're two of the toughest um, and best leaders I've ever played with. Jared Hayne 09 was unbelievable. I, I played in that, that side for seven games that year and I played early in the year when we weren't going that well and then I played a game later in the year when the team was humming and, mate, that was unbelievable watching him 
we carb up that game and um, yeah, probably pro- probably yeah, Jimmy or Jared in that 09 season. It's always talked about that 09 season of Jared's um, run at the end, like being one of the all-time great runs. But you forget how how good that sort of Parramatta 09 side was, and, and you were lucky enough to you know play a few games with them. Yeah, mate, and it was sort of like win loss, win loss at the start of the year, and um, you know then the boys just I think Jeff Robbo. Dan Mortimer and Kevy Kingston come into the side about halfway through the year. And that was sort of when the team just started to build a bit of momentum along with like Jared finding this form. And, you know, the old boys like Hindy and Kalis were just um, leading from the front. And, you know, that obviously ran into a Melbourne team who were too good. But, um, yeah, that like out there, Parramatta, they love rugby league even still now, you know. It's one of the heartlands of rugby league. So it was a pretty cool time to be involved. I remember um, the week before the the first finals week, um, Parramatta played Dragons and yeah, 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 and, and Dragons you know beat them, got the minor premiership, and that was like the everyone was going, oh, it's the run over for Parramatta, and we were all cheering. And then the very next week, we we went away for footy, like and coming back from Dubbo, stop halfway at the pub, and before we left, the game kicked off and get back to the pub, and like half time they were already done, it was already over, like Parramatta were in front, and we're like, oh fuck, we're gone here. Yeah, and, I know, uh, mate. They just put on a clinic, didn't they? Yeah, they just sort of, you know, they played that sort of, you know, went quiet the week before just to lay it all on the line the, the following week. And, yeah, that finals run was, was amazing. Yeah, that's uh, that was, what was, what's, uh, that was 09, yeah. Then obviously yeah. the Dragons next year went on to win the comp. Yeah, just just a year a year later. Well, that was all good. <laughs> mate, um, play you wished you played more footy with? Um... Oh, you know what? Like some of their Melbourne boys, like Cam Smith and Cooper Cronk and Billy Slater, like would have been pretty cool to be able to play in a football side with them. Just how consistent and, um, you know, they've just always got the best. Well, the whole system down there seems to just get the best out of everyone. But, um, yeah, it would have been pretty cool to play with them guys and, um, you know, have, have a crack down there and see, you know, where the career could have gone because, you know, they get people in and just... I remember Brian Norrie went there and we played in a New South Wales residence game in 2008, um, which was the reserve grade New South Wales team. And um, I don't know, was it 09 he went down there and then won a comp? You go 09 or was it 012? But, mate, he, he was done. I think he moved to Wagga or he moved to a country town. He was done. Yeah, he was out of Wagga because he's from Yagara, which is like yeah. out, out the road here. And um, yeah, then he went down to Wagga and was playing for the Kangaroos, I think. And yeah. Then and got plucked from there to... Might yeah, have been going to, to comp. Might have been 012, yeah. Yeah, and I, it like and he was just fucking bloke. He worked, worked hard and um, got the best out of himself down there. So, you know that that, that would have been um, cool to, to go down there. But um, you know, well, obviously, you, you, you're sort of I'm talking like, was there an option to go down there at some point? No, 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 no. Oh, I think there might have been uh, like early on. There might have been an option. Oh, <laughs> me old manager tossing that might have been bullshit. I don't know, yeah. but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, obviously looking back now, but at the time I was probably like, oh, fuck, they train too hard, so fuck that. Yeah. But still, you'd probably you, you'd, you'd go through that training, you'd think it's hard, but then that reward at the end, you know, you know you're playing finals. Mate, you know, 100%. You a good chance to make the grand final, yeah. And that's like, you just, even Dale Finuc and, um I just hear stories about him, how he was at training, and he, he apparently is just mad as a cut snake, so... It'd be interested to see like when he gets out of the system because I, I played with Cameron McGuinness and he, he's got, have, got the best attitude out of anyone I've ever trained or played with. So you got them two pushing all, all the boys along at Cronulla. They'll be in for a um, you know a bit of a shake up there, and they could be anything next year. Yeah, they do look good next year, um, mate. An underrated player, someone that you played with, but they didn't get the sort of credit that um, a lot of the other big players did. Um, I mentioned. Probably Michael Luck and Simon Mentoring. Obviously, over in New Zealand, you're a bit more sheltered from what's going on over here. And um, them two guys just pushed their body to the absolute limits and got got the absolute most out of themselves. Um, you know, they both had such a good influence on me off the field. And Michael was someone I, I really looked up to when I played for the Warriors. And like, I went, I went and started uni because he was going to uni and with my wife's guidance as well. But um, you know, they, them them boys obviously played a big part in the team getting to the grand final in 2011 and um you know since that point since them sort of two boys are retired i don't think they, they might have been to the finals once since and they were just the heart and soul of that football club yeah um what was it like um i think we sort of covered your local footy but um worst bloke to share a footy trip with 
Well, that's fine to share for you. Give me some context. In what, okay, what? so well, you, you probably already answered with James Maloney. So excluding James Maloney, um, they're not probably the biggest pests that you've played with. Yeah, so you, oh, so you, 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 you can, he can be a bit of a pony if you're on the pierce. Like he's so, sober, he's like the most, uh, he's such a switched on smart dude. He's um, educated, he invests really well. And um, then you get him on the drink and he's a terror. Um, like it, we, we've had a lot of fun together and a couple of um, good away trips. Um, well, better not bring up because he's still playing. But yeah. um, we'll, we'll keep it PG. Yeah, but he, 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 he he's on the drink. He's a me- he just he's like pissing me off because you know he'd get a reaction off me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'd say you were outside of Jimmy. I was, was going to say they're, they're, Jimmy, they're, Jimmy's, <laughs> Jimmy's number one, is he? Like. They're the guys like at the same time. I love being around Riff like yeah. when you're away, but at the same time they both fucking drive insane. Um, some of the some of the best little videos we see through social media is um, little stitch ups at training and stuff like that. And especially now they're in the they're in the bubble at some um, stitch up central up there. But uh, stitch ups are when you were playing like, training in the sheds, which was the teammate that was the quickest to bite or, or the easiest to get. Oh, James Graham, mate. He was a fucking psycho. He, um... You bring back like, the dra- Dragon's Bus. We should have... haven't even spoken yeah, about that. Yeah. Mate, I, I know I used to get him. Like, the, yeah, I had this smell and salt that, honestly, he'd probably knock most normal people out, but he'd sniff it before the game. And I used to have it too because it was like, like... They give it to the boxers when they get concussed to, like, bring him back. And he's there, like sniffing it like it's fucking oxygen before a game. And um, anyway, the day before the game, we're on the bus driving home, and I've, I've opened the lid. I, like I found, I was going through whose bags were near me, and it was his bag. So I've opened it up and opened his toiletries bag and found that. And I've opened the lid, and he turns around and goes, "Who the fuck's opened me?" Um, well, fucking open me, fuck you, last thing, fuck blowing up. He goes, "No, I'll fucking give it here." He goes, "What do you think? They just..." They can't, they can't create their self. He goes, these are hard to get from England, whatever. He goes, you're not getting this before the game tomorrow, so we'll play Manly the next day. Anyway, like, I'm, like, sniffing around his locker, like, before the game. He's like, don't fucking touch it. Like, wouldn't let me have it. And then um, he went into, like, the toilet, and I went to, like, open it. He come back out, come, don't touch it, took it in with him. And um, then, like, he's trying to make a joke, but at the end of the game, like, he goes, oh, I was just mucking around. Like, mate, you were genuinely angry at me for 24 hours. Like, it was literally after the game and we'd won that he'd talk to me properly again. His face just went bright red and his hair yeah. went even redder and um, mate, his, eyes, so, his eyes lit up. Hey, yeah, he, he, he's mad. He's um, he, he one of my great mates, but he's um, someone, like, he's so easy to get, like, yeah. as a get. And big for his use to love Jean him up as well. So um, we, we had a lot of fun. They, they were good days with the Dragons bus too. Like um, the, the games you used to play, if someone was late and have to roll the dice and eat a chili or shout coffees yeah. and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, mate. 2018, we, we had a lot of fun with that. Uh, Jason Norton go it up for us. We even had a sponsor, and um, yeah. you know the boys got right into it. and We had a laugh, but it uh, really faded away in 2019. So I said, that- "Okay, boys, that was the we created the culture, and uh, it went away." Is that when it left? Was that? Um- is that when it sort of died off? No, Gaz wasn't on it. No, Gypsy retired 2019, so oh, that, that probably had, a, yeah, had an effect on it. Um, but, yeah, Gaz was into rules, so he, he wasn't on the bus. Um, but, no, it was, it, was, it was always a laugh on there. You couldn't come in and not talk, otherwise you are sad or you are down. And, mate, yeah, you had to be on your A game every time. Yeah. Uh, you know, it makes for a good culture, like you said. But, mate, and that's it. Like, it's yeah, you get on the bus and... Regardless if you've had a bad day at training or whatever, you get on there and you know, you've got to be ready because someone's coming for you. Mate, uh, that wraps it up. Um, I, I really appreciate your time. Thanks for the uh, stories and, and answering all the uh, questions. Um, what, what are you, you mortgage, mortgage broken now, you said? Yeah, mate, mortgage broken now. Um, a bit different to what I've done for so long and I've always had an interest in finance and investing and um, you know, I did a business degree at uni and didn't really suit me going into corporate working in that sort of space but this is a bit more social and you know um something i'm, I'm really enjoying and something you know if i can apply what i did in footy through working hard i can um you know build a successful career and you know this year i've had a really good year last year was tough um like i retired into like covid so self-employed i didn't have um like the 
customer base is yet better. You know, my clientele has really grown and, um, you know, feel the footy boys have been really good coming to me and you know, referring people through to me. So, um, yeah, I, I really do enjoy it. And I, I mentioned I do some stuff for Dragons as well. So yep. got a good, a good um, balance there at the moment. And, um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, so it's very if, different to footy, but <laughs> do enjoy if you, it. If you enjoyed the, uh, the laughs that he gave you uh, on and off the field during his career, hit him up for a um, refinance your mortgage and, I'm sure you'll look after you. Yeah, my man. Hey, find me on Instagram. Um, yeah, if you if you want to buy a house or you need to refinance, just give me a buzz. Or even if you want any sort of advice around a home loan, because you know rates are cheap at the moment and the property market is booming. So yeah. <laughs> make sure you've got plenty of savings as well. I love it. Like as soon as you retired, you went from lats what 1986 to. Jeremy underscore Lattimore. You went full corporate. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's oh, I've got a, that's what my wife's like. Yeah, you're gonna work off your personality, but you can't be too stiff. But um yeah. You imagine it's, like yeah. someone like uh Brandon Smith when he retires, like, Oh yeah, um hit me up for a uh a finance uh, finance advisor. Yeah, just find me a hectic cheese. <laughs> Mate, he, hectic, that's the, you know, here's this fucking hectic cheese, baby. You've got a couple hundred thousand followers and uh, maybe you want to, uh, you know, I can help you uh, invest for the future. Yeah, scroll through and you'll find him like throwing up after eating too many chilies or something, you know. Mate, you, you'll need him on TV, mate. He's um, he's a character. Oh, I think a lot of them now are actually um, realising that. Like they're realising, you know, their personalities that they have on social media is going to, you know, reward them after the game and, and you know, have these type of personalities on TV all the time, which is good to see. And that's it, mate. Like you, you sort of, especially American sport, and you even see the the Paul brother yesterday. Like he's this outspoken fucking YouTuber who fucking fought Tyron Woodley, who is a UFC champion, but he, he's racking in millions and millions because he is what he is. Like he's a marketing machine, but he just acts how he wants to do. It. And it's obviously different environment and climate over here, and we're a bit more PC, but. You know, people like Munster and Brandon Smith and, um, you know, there's boys out there now who, who, who are acting what they really like and the fans fucking love it. And, and, to, and I know there's a few things there at the start. I think Toby Rudolph had a bit of a laugh and the PC Warriors were back out. But um, I, I know, you know, I'm a punter now. I love, I love seeing the boys have a laugh and act like what they really like because, um, you know, it, it is a bit of a world where everyone's quick to judge now. So let, let the boys live. Yeah, we're, we're never going to get it, but I'd love to see, like, you know, in American sports – they come out and they might, um, you know, say, I'm going to run rings around this guy, you know, or I'm going to drop 50 on him in basketball or whatever it is. Yeah. I'd love to see that. In, it's so much of a team sport you can't have it because there'd be some a leader would come through and say you can't put this much pressure on the team and all that. But I'd love to see, like, someone just come out and go, mate, I'm going to, I'm going to um, make 50 tackles and, and they're not going to get past me all day. Yeah, I know. Imagine like doing that in a Craig Bellamy team, and mate, it, it is. It's. A, it, I, I think it's different. The Americans are just so outspoken, but it would be like it'd be awesome. You know, he's playing this week. I don't even know yeah. he's playing this week, but someone comes out and goes, "I'm going to rip his head off." Yeah. Playing Jimmy Maloney, I'd love to say that. Well, the perfect example was like Sharks and Storm. They play on like Friday night. I'd love for you know uh, you're not going to have it, but Toby Rudolph to come out and go. You know, um, Dale Finucane or, or um, Jesse Bromwich ain't getting through me this week. And just, yeah. you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bust him in half. Because the, the worst thing that happened, they used, he'd say that, they'd run over the top of him, score a try, and then he'd be blasted by the media for the next, you know, two weeks. But I know. But then imagine if he did that, and then he's like, you know, anymore, he's on the ground, and then, you know, then I go out have a bit of crap. But it, would be, it would be entertaining, you know, yeah. really get the fans into it. And they do build off that in the American entertainment business. But, um, yeah, it is very different to over here. But maybe one day, Rusty. Mate, I, I would, uh, as a f- uh, owner of a social media page that thrives on um, players doing this sort of stuff, I would absolutely love it. But I uh, understand why they don't. Yeah, mate, let's uh, hold out hope. We might have a few boys in the future. Brendan Smith, yeah. surely he's got it in it, but not why he's coached by Craig. <laughs> no, I think, the, you know, in, if you look at the game in you know, 10, 15 years' time with kids coming through that have grown up in the social media and, and so much, yep. you know, Americanised sport, you know, watching... Uh, I think uh, we may see a little bit of a change, whether it's what we're talking about just then, maybe not, but there, there might be some, they'll be outspoken after the game a bit more. Won't be just yeah. cliched answers. Yeah. In, in oh, I reckon the, you're right there, 100%. Yeah, yeah. That, that American influence. Mate, um, thanks so much for your time. Um, I appreciate it. I'll drop all your socials uh, in this chat, but I um, no, appreciate your time. Appreciate the laughs you gave us on the page and to the fans over the last uh, few years of your career. And, um, who knows? The, the goat might make a comeback. 
um, in some way, shape, or form in the future. Yeah, no worries, mate. Get me, when Big Jimmy's back from England, get us on and we'll um, we'll, we'll give you a fucking laugh. <laughs> done, done deal. We'll just uh, have to maybe centre half of it or or save it for a um, post post coaching yeah. career from him. One hundred percent, mate. We'll definitely yeah, get you yeah. back on. All right, bro. No worries. Thanks, Rusty. Thanks, See mate. You, Talk to you soon. Cheers, bro.